Hello again, it's Matthew from Matthew North Music. Thank you for watching my latest video. And if you like these videos or you're interested in the sort of subjects I cover on this channel, please think about subscribing to the channel and clicking the little bell icon because in that way you will be informed next time there's a video uploaded that I've put out. And uh, I cover a broad spectrum of things, whether it's electronics, music, records, guitars, all sorts of things. And today's video is going to be about something that's quite close to my heart, which is the BBC microcomputer. Now, I've done several videos about the BBC and different bits of hardware and different bits of software and things. But there's one thing I've always wanted to do if it was ever possible, and that is to build a BBC micro from scratch. And thankfully, a chap called Bob has enabled anybody to just do that and I'll show you how. Well then this turned up today. Now I was looking on Twitter and I happened to see that somebody had made something that would enable anyone to build a BBC Micro. And as soon as I saw this, I just ordered one straight away. So let's open it up and see what we've got. I'm just gonna trim down here. I'm gonna be very careful on this because I don't wanna scratch or damage anything which will become apparent when it's, when it's uh, all open. Pull that out, and that should be enough. Let's see what we've got here. Right, some paperwork in there that I'm gonna leave in. But what we have is this. And if you don't know what that is, then you're probably watching the wrong video. But what this is, is it's a reproduction of the main printed circuit board for an issue seven BBC microcomputer. And looking at it on first glance, it's made with a very high quality board. And uh, yeah, it's double, double sided. So there's tracks on both sides as per the original. And uh, yeah, this is um, really, really nice. Rob Taylor's done an excellent job and Reading the website, when this was being produced and being designed, they were testing it all the way. And so that uh, by the time we have the finished board, then uh, everything is all present and correct. I mean, it, you know, you, there is a lot of components on this board. I mean, I think there's something like 150 resistors. I think there's a similar number of capacitors. Um, and a lot of the resistors also have to be mounted vertically which is why it doesn't look as big as it actually is. And there's something like, I think about 75 chips or something on a BBC Micro. Um, we've got all the space here. This is where all the Econet stuff goes. Um, there's been a couple of little mods um, to the original board. They've just moved a couple of things like where the reset switch goes there so you can actually fit one in. Um, and the composite video output is now fitted so you can actually have a, a standard um, sort of phono connector that's uh, soldered to the board that will then peep out through the hole where the um, the BNC connector is on a standard B because obviously a, a, a phono connector is going to be much more use. And I'm just going to pan the camera across and you can just see that the uh, the quality of this board is absolutely superb. I mean, it really is a, a labour of love. And uh, just tilt down as well, you can see there, that's where all our memory is, all our RAM there. And at the bottom here, as we get down the bottom, past the RAM, that's where all our ROM chips go. And then I'll uh, move across and we come towards where all the sort of disk interfacey type stuff is and other interface stuff. We've got the, uh, the speech synthesizer chips will go in there. And uh, in the middle of the board, of course, we've got our central processing unit. So all together, we've got the complete board. Now, the great thing about doing something like this from scratch is that you can build the whole thing from new, new stock, new components. So new capacitors, new resistors, new chips. The only chip that you cannot replace is the one here, which is a custom chip, which is the video ULA. Now, I have a working ULA, 
because what I actually have is a broken BBC Micro where the motherboard got blown up, but the all the socketed chips I know on it are good. But I also have something else which I acquired not so long ago. The first thing is, last year I was considering rebuilding this Beeb that I already had from scratch, and I actually bought a full set of RAM chips. Um, these came from what, eBay from someone in Bulgaria, but I never got around to using them, so I have a complete set of RAM. But then the other thing I have is the contents of these storage boxes. Now, a couple of years ago, I bought a BBC Micro from a chap in Cornwall who also had a lot of electronic components. And he also had, more or less, in his own words, a full set of chips for the BBC Micro. Because he was into his electronics, he wanted to have a backup for everything that he had. So in this box here, there's a load of ROMs here, and there's a, I think that's a PIO there, but then we've got all these chips here, and then we've got another load of chips here. I think there's a processor there. I think these might be the uh, Philippines. I think there might be a set of speech chips actually, but there's a load of chips there. There's even a, an amplifier, I think, there for the speaker. And then in this box, I've got, there's more ROMs there, but then underneath, We've got a whole batch of chips there, everything from voltage regulators to logic chips. I mean, you know, there's a whole kit and caboodle of stuff there. And then we have another box here with even more chips in. So, you know, we've got a whole bucket load here. And uh, yeah, we've even got some more, uh, more rooms and stuff there. So in theory, I should have most of the chips to build a BBC Micro. And if we look at the board, the only other things we're going to need to buy will be things like the edge connectors here for plugging in all the different peripherals, the uh, user port, the disk drive, the tube port, etc., And the sockets on the back here for the uh, monitors, the sort of five pin DINs, but they're readily available. And a multi-pin connector here for the keyboard Although I think the ones that I use for the Cosmo synth modules will probably be the right size. And I have got one of the new um, Retro Clinic extension leads for the keyboard. So it's a, basically it's a replacement keyboard cable. But you can actually move the keyboard away from the board without disconnecting it. So, you know, for changing ROMs and stuff, it's really easy. But the idea with this board is I'm going to go the whole hog and I'm going to do everything so i'll build the basic computer make sure it works then i'll probably put econet on it even though i've never used econet in my life it's just nice to have it on there and i'll get a speech synthesizer on there and we'll have the disk drives and everything else will be on it so it'll be a fully complete issue 7 board and in theory if this is all working then it should last for another 40 years which will take me to the age of 90. So if my YouTube channel is still running when I'm 90, then I will dig this BBC Micro out and, uh, I don't know, play Hunchback on it or something. But uh, anyway, hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please stick around because I will be doing updates on this. I'm not just gonna do one video of the whole thing. There will probably be, I would say, four or five videos on this. So yeah, please like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.